you mentioned there's like a few learning experiences there, which I'm sure, uh, I mean, like in the NFT and crypto space, that can be pretty uh, painful on on the hip pocket. Once you started to understand the space, what made projects kind of good and work and, and kind of grow from there, what were some of the first ones that you started looking at flipping and trading and, um, and really kind of leveraging? Because I know that a lot of people really get sometimes addicted to, they buy in something like, oh, this project sounds amazing. And they get like, really precious with it versus being like, well, do you treat it as like an asset? Do you try and treat it like a stock that you buy low, you know, sell high? Like how did you start thinking about it from that perspective? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's two types of trading in this space. There's kind of the short-term trading, which is, you know, just sort of flipping and scalping, whatever you want to call it, where it's just like get in, get out and try to make a little bit of profit. And then there's that longer term trading, which is like, okay, you know, this is a team and, and a project that I believe in. I want to park some capital here. Um, and then, you know, you kind of leave it for, for two, three, maybe six months, who knows, you know, I was a little bit late to the, the board Ape yacht club and I, um, saw them going at like 15, 20 ETH. And I was like, you know, it's a little bit crazy. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. And that's cause I was busy in that flipping mindset. I thought, you know, that's not really for, you know, it's not really something I can flip too comfortably. Um, and I hadn't really developed that idea of thinking about, okay, good teams, longer term investment and starting to see it more as an asset. So, um, you know, when you, when you break down what those two categories are, the short term is really like it's really just a supply demand equation. It's like, okay, um, I can see that if I manage to get my hands on one of these, it's going to be easy to move it on. Like there's a, there's a, there's a raffle for the allow list, for example, or, you know, it's a, I've got allow list through another collection. It's in some way or another, I've been lucky enough to be able to mint it or buy it. And I can see that, you know what, the volume's crazy. The demand is crazy. And it's very likely that I'm going to, you know, get in and out with a bit of profit. And that's, that's how I kind of started. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, like I said, it became, okay, this team has got a lot of experience. These are some really great developers. They really understand brand user experience. Um, they're really passionate about the space. They're backed by incredible investors. You know, and now I spend a lot more time looking for those, you know, 0.1% teams um, because there's not a lot of them uh, where I can kind of, you know, put a significant amount of capital behind it and, and feel comfortable leaving it for, you know, several months at a time. And um, some of the recent ones, you know, like Azuki was an example of that. I, I saw what they were doing really early on put quite a bit into it, but I just saw that, you know, these guys are well connected, super talented, really passionate about the space. And, you know, that was like a two month play for me, but it was super profitable. So it was just about making that shift in mindset, really.